What is up, Truth Seekers? This is your Royal Boy Ben back with another juicy, juicy Royal attack. Now, here we go, guys. I've got some raw tea that's going to leave your jaws on the floor. We're talking next level isolation and betrayal from Harry's own bloodline here. So you already know the deets. Prince Petulant is scheduled to make one of his sporadic solo trips back across the pond next week, ostensibly to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of his beloved Invictus Games. But sources are dishing out that this was also Harry's big chance to finally extend an olive branch and restart rebuilding some bridges with his alienated royal family. So I know you guys are excited to hear this. But before we delve into the tumultuous waters of this revelation, I want to thank you for your love and support. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon. So now, well, pump the brakes on that reunion fancy because it seems nobody in the firm wanted any part of the Duke's desperate reconciliation scheme. Multiple reports are confirming that Prince William, Zara Tyndall and most other working roles straight up ignored and declined Harry's invites to attend the Invictus event. The ultimate cold shoulder. Could you even imagine the soul-crushing anguish this arrogant prick must feel getting frozen out by his closest relatives who he's been dragging through the mud for years? Harry no doubt envisioned this homecoming being a long-awaited chance to smooth things over amid the endless Netflix controversy and vindictive memoir lies, but his own family won't even dignify him with a damn response, let alone show up for a pity party. Oof. You can practically feel the heat radiating off those icy relations already scratch beneath the surface and this latest reunion rejects as Sub-Zero Dis is scrawled all over it. Think William and the cousins are sending a symbolic message by skipping Invictus? More like launching an extremely calculated nuclear strike specifically decimating Harry's remaining delusion. This is pretty much the entire extended role brain trust unanimously Concurring that the exiled Duke has simply become way too untrustworthy and malicious to ever let back into the Sovereign inner orbit again. No half measures, no more enabling Harry's bottomless victim shtick with participation trophy attendances, just a united front closing ranks around the throne. Let's just say Prince William got the message loud and clear over these past few years that his younger brother's true stretching crusade against the firm wasn't just some temporary celebrity hissy fit. Instead, thanks to Spurs' lurid incendiary chapters and the pair's breathless accusations of the Windsor racism against Meghan, William realised the harsh truth. Harry is a fundamentally broken tool of the cult of Sussex, whose entire purpose is burning the monarchy to the ground. So why on God's green earth would the heir to the throne even entertain taking the high road one more time for some superficial reconciliation stunt? William's already witnessed how quickly the perpetually offended Harry twists even the smallest act of goodwill into self-serving propaganda about the royals excluding oppressing his family. Any scepticism gets warped into evidence of Meghan's bonkers truth-telling war against the palace's supposed bigoted hostility. Therefore, the prince knows pouring one more ounce of grace onto the endeavour is utterly pointless. Every time William and Kate took the high road with gentle encouragement for healing this familial rift, the Sussexes just saw it as shrill weakness. Multiple insiders were onto something when they recently alleged any slim hope of Detente essentially died at the moment Meghan dragged the saintly Princess of Wales name through the mud with unspeakable allegations in her interviews. The consensus was William drew a firm line at defending his wife's honour against these deceptions no matter how grave the diplomatic cost for the heir watching his own brother staying stupidly mum. While the woman he once loved like a sister openly branded Kate as an elitist racist snob who made Meghan cry was the ultimate high crime. A sacred vow of marital protection was violated by these two selfish jackasses prioritizing Netflix profits over basic human decency. There was simply no walking that back this time. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, guys. This is unbelievable as always. So... Hosting Harry for some dog and pony show fake truce next week would essentially force his big bro to compromise core principles and family values just to appease the insatiable ego of an entitled little brother. Small wonder William chose to politely decline subjecting his household to any more of those stomach-churning mind games, because let's be honest, as soon as this contrived olive branch inevitably got slapped out of Harry's clammy inbred palms again, you just know he'd be right back on the therapy couch rehashing sick tales of the royal's continued coldness and racial insensitivity towards his truth-telling brood. The whole rotten cycle would start all over with no end in sight to the narcissistic grudge holding. At this point, even subjecting the kids to Uncle Prince Grifter is likely a non-starter for William. Why traumatise his poor innocent offspring 
by marinating them in the same toxic delusions of grandeur that eroded Harry's sanity into the hopeless basket case he is today. Better to freeze this unstable act out altogether until he gets the intensive treatment. His disorders clearly need. Besides, why should the palace go through contortions to reward Harry's perpetual stunts for more media crumbs? And pity points. Sources indicate that the Duke had yet another cringeworthy sit down with his brown nosing royal trauma pimp Oprah Winfrey lined up after the Invictus ceremony, an obvious scheme to galvanize global sympathy, heading into his next round of buck plugging and future lawsuits. From William's perspective, falling for that tri tired old trick of attending Invictus, all doughy eyed and earnest would have just given his manipulative brother all the soft lens cinematography animation. He needs to paint the prince as some callous brute snubbing him at his own party. The woe is me narrative was prime for milking anew. So kudos to Wills for having the wisdom to avoid that transparent trap. Instead of placing Harry's psychosis any further, maybe skipping out on Invictus sends a tough love signal for this wayward duke to start seeking for help. Or perhaps the future king is simply coming to the sad realization, allowing even these limited controlled interactions with his incorrigible little brother still poses too great of a security risk. That said, don't think William and the cousins sitting this one out absolves them of any guilt whatsoever over letting this shattered relationship with her so hopelessly over the past decade. While Harry's ego is clearly the inflamed root cause, it still took the firm's negligence and denial in enabling his maladies to ultimately reach this point of irreparable toxicity. We're also talking about a family ill-equipped for confronting modern mental illness amplified through the social media toxicity. Tear that was Project Megan. The Windsor Way has always been stuffing problems under the rug and maintaining a stiff upper lip for public duties. Clearly, the outdated approach badly backfired in cultivating Prince Renegade's festering resentments and martyrdom fetish. So, in William and Co.'s ultimate freeze-out of Harry, really justice is all, or just the latest sad turn in the vicious cycle of miscommunication and pride fueling an unstoppable downward spiral for both sides in their efforts to suffocate the attention wildfires that feed the Sussex's constant provocation. Are the rest of the roles actually enabling their alienation to reach cataclysmic dead ends? It's entirely possible. William gritting his teeth and donning the emotional armor best displays who's actually rising above the bitter acrimony here by simply abstaining and refusing to feed the circus. The prince draws clear boundaries and protections around preserving royal dignity while Harry chirps away to clashing scores of thoughts on proper honor. So guys, what do you think about the news? Of course, let us know in the comments and we will see you very, very soon again for more royal news and analysis, guys. Goodbye for now.